your boy Portray, and rapping ass DJ. Feel this. I'm one of the illest niggas, no one even knows. Someone asked me why I said I'm out here seeking goals. Trading time for money don't seem like the right move. You content with your job, climb the ladder to you. I be in and out the pocket like breath. Never been broke again, pocket stand on two lumps like breath. Everyone can play check, it's not too many play check. When you're in the tough drum, prove something. He a bust a nigga head like do something. Off of Addy, he been up some like two something. Go and press a nigga buttons, he a mute something. Fifth stuck to my hip like my baby is. Sitting in a spaceship like Amy. Hey, oh, a pool with when I flow, a I'm blowing this shit. Smoking this shit. Yeah, it's called Dro. And in this shit, nigga smoke this gang. When I'm smoking this bang. When I like this shit. It's like Nova Kane. No, I gotta ride, nigga, sitting on the low. No, I gotta bang, cause it's all for the mo. I'm smoking this shit when they're keeping it dope. Off the top of the dome When I'm smoking this shit You smell that shit That's the fire cologne Tell my nigga When I spit from the earth No, I gotta get a nigga Stop it through the worst This shit they curse It's that shit They came from the earth Smoke it the most and I found it on the West Coast with a dome. Nobody gotta see him bounce. I had to draw it out on my cut and teach his ass a lesson. Told my niggas belt to ask his loyalty a question. I know a nigga be on an A floss flag in the section. He just caught a body swear he did enough. I squeezed with a pistol with my little cousin, I would have bust his brain. Still, my nigga, I need a hug charger to the game. I'm riding 5% tenant chief supreme gas. I call my nigga, I say, let's get it. He know it's belt to ass. And I ain't sparing none of you niggas, so I don't need no pass. I'm All right, brother. Tell us who your name is. I'm playing tattoo. What's the deal with it? So, how do you know DJ? Man, that's my little brother, man. Been knowing him since birth, man. Since he was little, little chubby fat baby. <laughs> but I already know he was gonna be a G this shit. That, that's what our family is. That's what we made out of. It's definitely. So what memories do you have of DJ back in the day, man? Good, bad, ugly, man. funny, crazy, man. man. We want to hear it all. One of his moments, man, is when our moms was in the hospital and we was all up there. I want to say we had just got in trouble, so we was already on a tight, tight chain, so we couldn't do nothing. And uh, Grandma was cleaning off her glasses and, uh, you know, DJ, being DJ goofy, came out of nowhere. I can see it like a motherfucker. He kept doing it, but he was doing it low enough to where grandma was like, huh, baby, huh? But, hey, that, that's one of the funniest moments, man. It just, there's always, just, man, that was my, I wouldn't call it a tag alone, but you know how a shark raises their baby. It, you know, it, 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 that's how he was, you know, he was always around, always in close, you know, close reach. I got something for that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I eat something. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you pop that right. Take that up out of there, you know what I'm saying? Guys, <laughs> keep, guys, keep this more fucking handy, man. Okay, that's the, that's, 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 that's the thirty, <laughs> that's the thirty. I done seen so much of it. I hate love. The real die young and leave behind all the fake ones. I'm fucked up, no doubt about it. Ask me if I ever question God. I can't lie about it. Got my pole tucked, rather be caught with it than caught without it. Everything I gain. So. Rapping ass DJ, my brother, my brother, man, we back again for part two. What's been going on with you, man? Shit, man, I've been traveling the coast and shit, same shit, you know. Where we at right now? Kansas City, motherfucking Missouri and shit. Kansas City, Missouri. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, man, back in KC, you know, uh, we just won the Super Bowl, man. How you thinking about that? We got we got three rings on the finger now, man. Oh, man, we know what the fuck is. We stepped on Philly. Shout out to you, shit. But, you know, we stepped on Philly. It was one good time. You know, built to ass. Turn around my box like a rock, like a rain. Killing too many niggas. Eat up my plate. It ain't said it real, but these niggas be fake. Niggas, they be stunning as they come. Yeah, these niggas be snakes. Niggas be can't trust the niggas, bro. Hell yeah, when it hell comes yeah. To the you think, uh, that's definitely a nice ass win for the city, man. Uh, we definitely enjoyed that for sure. Um, so, what was the biggest highlight of your upcoming that you had this year, or this last year, with your success? 
What's the the biggest? The biggest highlight. Shit, my distributor, man. My distributor, shout out TuneCore. TuneCore just really been giving me a push. They really been adding me to programs, you know, uh, acceleration programs and shit. Um, numbers, numbers constantly going up. Uh, we constantly spreading. We added on about four or five more states on to the list. And, you know, from there, that's just what it is. That was uh, that actually leads me to my next question uh, that I have for you. What state do you think stands behind rapping as DJ and, and his brand the most? Most definitely Kansas City. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Every state had a perks. Every state had a you know they goods and they bads and shit. But ain't nothing like Kansas City. They support me most definitely here. Um, I think it's more of other states. Some states, it just be more of unbelievable. Like, damn, how did this nigga come through here and make his own way with his own rules and his own? And he completely bypassed and boom, it really be a lot of envy and jealous in that, though. So I say my home city. Okay, okay, that's what's up. Uh, that actually gives me this next question that I actually had, too. Um, so what about your success separates you from the other Kansas City greats like Tech, Rich, you know, Kiwi and them? I mean, um, everybody got their own opinion, don't give or take. Um, with me, I actually tuck on to the digital world a lot differently than Tech Nine or Rich the Factor or Kiwi Eyes and them are really my whole um, sound wave of music. Uh, what I mean by the digital world is actually studying the meta tags, the in and outs of social media, actually engaging with the fans, actually engaging with the apps, actually following the rules and, and, bull and not on the internet like I'm too cool for TV or not like, oh, I'm just boom. So what set me out is the digital and also Traveling the world, not saying everybody don't travel, but it's a different from moving away and going to live in these states, you know, six months to a year, two years, boom. And and, and so it's, it's, it's always a plus that I distributed my music everywhere and I let them have Kansas City because I always felt like the way Kansas City works, soon as you get big, no matter who you are, they're going to dick ride. They gonna dick ride or they gonna hate regardless. They either gonna know you or they not gonna know you or that's just what it is. Man, speaking of um, people coming out of uh, KC, man, uh, you know the rapper Sleazy Go, man. Uh, <laughs> we hear about him coming up. We uh, we heard you got some info on this dude, man. Tell us, tell us more about that. Nah, see, when I first came home, this shit, I was fucking with Sleazy. I'm like, damn, dude, flow go hard. I'm like, he popped out of nowhere, though. I'm like, man, I don't know who this nigga is. I don't know what block he from. But he got the Kansas City flow pattern. And plus, he got a few Kansas City artists and shit fucking with him. So, I was just checking him out and shit. And, um, long story short, long story short, him and his people, the dude he be with, shit, they told, you know, they, they snitched and they facing not good back home in their home state. So he come down here to Missouri. And we not knowing nothing about that because if we did, we got zero tolerance for it. We got some of the most dopest rats that can't rap no more because we don't support rats. And if we did support rats, they'd be way doper than the biggest artists in the game because them niggas is rats too, you know? We but, heard you actually had a personal connection to Lil Baby about Sleazy Go. Was this true? Oh, shit. Yeah, see, that was my only thing with Lil Baby. My only thing was with Lil Baby and like Migos Mim is when he first dropped that sleazy flow and shit and the paperwork came in. And I'm stirring off paperwork. You know, I had to do my time because motherfuckers snitched on me. But when his paperwork came in, um, I, I motherfucking distributed it. I made sure it touched everybody's hands that it needed to touch. All the verified people, they seen it. You know what I mean? But the way the industry work, the industry don't give a fuck if you a snitch or not as long as don't nobody know. So they was thinking that it was never get out and shit. 
So, um, Lil Baby ended up finally hitting me up and shit. He was like, where the paperwork at? And I sent the paperwork to him. My thing with the DM was this. It don't benefit me hiding and covering up they faults and they dark secrets in the industry. Uh, uh, how does that benefit me? Hey, fuck this bitch, a nigga drama. bitch over shit. Nigga flaw, so you know what he teach. No this machine, thing. I came up off a beat. Know you flopped when you minus that feet. If I'ma do it, I'ma do it for me. Do it for me. Do it for I see you over here holding it down. Holla at me sometime, man. What? Niggas ain't selling that bra, you niggas selling that big. Let me get some of them exclusives you got. Pay attention, you bastard. Niggas ain't selling that bra, you niggas selling that big. Fuck a diss, a nigga diss overseas. No machine, I came up off a beat. Nigga flaw, so you know what he teach. No, you flopped when you minus that feet. If I'ma do it, I'ma do it for me. I can't let no nigga dictate me. I'm on point, 2020 I see. I know your face like a state ID. At your veins, bitch, came IV. Painted your picture, bitch, and this is what I see. Down bad, they just can't see the police. Yeah, you in the trench, but pop in police. Freedom of speech, I'm just popping my pee. Strip them neck and force 223. Still a felon, never use no props. Been thugging since niggas pop trunks. Fuck the coaches, say he do it for Trump. Them niggas ain't trying to throw a nigga no future. Them niggas ain't trying to boom, so I did what I did. My point was that he know that Sleazy's a rat. And he ain't got on his platform. He ain't tucked the song down from streaming. Oh, they still getting paid, because that's the way the industry worked. But yeah, that was my thing with um, him, is that all them niggas was fans, and all of them was co-signing for him. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, touchdown, man. Back on my block, man. No security, no police, no rap niggas, none of that. This is my block right here. This is my block right here. All that shit niggas talking about. I got niggas what? I'm talking about, and this is my third time coming back. Man. This is my spot right here. You see this? 35th Jackson. Trench coat in the trenches. You see what I'm saying? Come watch out. So, you like that? Yeah. Like that right. Jackson. That's where I grew up at. Over there. I used to work down there at that corner. My neighbors, you know, they've been there forever. That was my grandma friends and shit. I forgot their name, but this is where it all was. Yeah. I'm trying to push all the way through. So is this thing on? I'm say my grandma put my name I'm trying to push all the way through. It's what I said. I pray Allah let me a Jenna know my dirty sweat. Cause where was niggas at when I was mopping floors? I don't wanna go outside today. I'm out my body, I put the stew out at my hideaway. When got a job, I had to find a way. Helicopters on my line, greasy on my line. Rasta see my roots, no, I don't speak no swine With a G, man, I cut cream every time Perry Ellis, I'm just trying to survive Killer City got me back, selling raw It's the weekend, I'm where niggas ain't allowed Bitch, I'm scheming My granny car, my name off in the cement I don't wanna come outside today I ain't trying to duck from cameras today Teardrops, I ain't want them on my face If I don't know, I'll treat them like he the Jakes Think I give a fuck a fake love, nigga Fuck you, want me convince you that I'm the plug, nigga Look where I'm at, you think I'm dumb, nigga Fuck all that rap and CPZ at your gun, nigga The game rigged, just strong, don't the fuck, nigga Throw back from the tray, we never trust, niggas Memory from the club, I had to put my hand on a nigga I touch down like I ain't stand with no nigga If it wasn't for our life, I would blame a nigga All that hating, where your bands then? Every time you see we sticked up, her hand can Pillow talk, catch a 2010 10-5, I'll top, oh, you know we locked in He say it's 20, I'm jammed in this FN if you spin, just know you can spin again. Many men don't step to find me. They choking niggas out, got them screaming, I can't breathe. Not if I die, would you say RIP? You'll get lynched if you faking with the Dean. Since 15, niggas been pushing cream. On 28th, way before 23. Off dope, seen the killer turn thief. Learn to swim before you drown in the sea. Cause this a way that you couldn't even believe. Niggas rookie and this shit still teething. On ice, 20 sun below free. Which coast, it all depends on the season. I ain't no play, I just fuck a lot. 5 a.m., no, I'm busting some light. Think like I'm normal, only when I'm high. Hell yeah, no, man, that's crazy, bro. We, uh, we definitely see that you really connected to the industry, and they definitely have their eyes on your brand and your artistry, for sure. Most definitely, most definitely. First starting off, 
Give us your name and how you're connected with Rapping Ass DJ. Okay, my name is... DJ, in my heart, is my son. But he is actually my great nephew. But the love is so deep because he has been around me. Again, he's my son. That's great. That's great to hear. Yes. All right. So, what awesome, crazy memories do you have of rapping as DJ in the past, man? Well, this is when he first started knowing about what life is about, or should I say the street life. Okay. Uh, there was a time he was hanging with a wow crowd or DJ possibly could uh, do things alone but uh, he was living with us and then we would have uh, the people that drive the blue cars you know the blue cars that have the um, sirens, sirens on top yeah, of police, them yeah. um, they would sometimes come to our house, but my mama was very protective of DJ. That DJ would be laying back because I'd come in, I'd tell him, get your ass up, get up. But my mama, leave that baby alone. And then my neighbor might call us and say, but, you know, those people are pulling up. DJ would hear that, DJ would jump up, and we had a fence in the backyard. I mean, you know, talking about jumping a fence, DJ could get over that fence and his feet would not even touch the top of the fence. Man, he had hops, huh? Great hops. Many hops. But that is my baby still. Mm -hmm. um, he went through life and I'm glad that he found the rapping mm -hmm. because it gave him a sense of pride a sense of well-being uh, I remember how they used to sit out in the front yard um, the whole neighborhood would sit out front the young kids my friends my mama's friends we'd all be out in the front yard mm -hmm. you know maybe all day mm -hmm. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and then he'd get up here when he first started this dumb da da dum 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 I'm like, what in the world? Because, you know, I'm strictly a Southern Blues person or R&B, and I really couldn't initially get into the rap. Couldn't understand it quite. Um, I understood it, mm -hmm. the words, but during that time, all of the cursing when it first evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess part of it was my friends didn't like it. So I was following the crowd like, oh, I don't like it either. Mm -hmm. But basically in my heart, I was like, go on, dude. Go on, dude. You know, I try to be a person that doesn't judge my family. Mm -hmm. Um, I can only make sure that they're able to talk to me and not hold anything back mm -hmm. because I do not judge them. Yes. We can talk it over, you know, and I can say how I may handle a situation, mm -hmm. you know, and then let them tell me how they handle it. It's a very good strategy. Mm -hmm. So what about DJ stuck out the most? growing up what what about him just yelled out at you like what set him out from all your other grandchildren he was loving towards me i could take him with me any place and there's always that mama 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 and dj the way that he came into my life or my family's life I just wanted to make certain that he understood 
we made no difference between him and the very next one. In fact, I'm closer to DJ than I am with some of my nephews or children that I've raised mm -hmm. uh, his age. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, did you ever picture DJ having the success that he has today? <sighs> yes and no. But I really didn't know to the extent it would take him. Mm -hmm. And I do foresee him, as you all say, blowing up. Um, because I'm proud of him. And I faithfully look on Facebook to try to follow him. <laughs> and it just does me so good, or makes me feel good, to look at the different areas mm -hmm. of the country he's traveling to or has traveled to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, hey, I love for people to be able to experience different cities, mm -hmm. different lifestyles. Yes. And I think that he has done that, and I'm knowing that he does enjoy that as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Okay, so if uh, you were to give DJ some advice or words of wisdom, what would you tell him right now about his career? Don't get caught up with wrong people. Um, research who you're going to be around. Uh, if you're going to make a business deal, make sure that you have studied uh, the company, you know. They're a very smart woman. Do they, uh, you know, make gains and strides or have they lost mm -hmm. several different times? Mm -hmm. um, and I believe he, well, I know he's on that track. Mm -hmm. Well, since DJ has gained all this fame and success, what are the moments that you felt concerned or you felt that you were the most happy about? Like, have you been able to see the highlights in his career and watch the different things that have happened in his career? Yeah, when I go on Facebook and he's met uh, several people that are very influential in his life. Um, I'm waiting on him. It's a thing that... When he hits big times, he's gonna pull up in a black big on truck. black on black. Yeah, Suburban and he's gonna twenty twenty two. And he's gonna pack me up and take me away. Yes, so. So I know it's gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. Somewhere in where our vision is somewhere in the south, where it's just the land is already bought. It's a nice ass cabin, big already put there, with nice views. The lights is on, water is on, it's just ready to move in. And then, then just the peace, the peace is the, the blessings of it. You know, the, the, the fresh water and stuff. That's how I see it. That's how I visualize it. In 2022, it may be a, a newer year. It might be a new year. But it's going to be black on black on black. And it's going to be bulletproof. Okay. And it's going to be, it, I told mama, don't pack nothing. It's going to be a crew to come in and pack everything. You don't do so no That's what I'm talking about. You just yeah. hop in and... Until you land. Yeah. That's my dream. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, and I'm glad he's got that vision because I'm a person that I've visualized a lot of things. Some of them have happened in my life and some haven't. Mm -hmm. But for my age to see the younger people uh, succeed, or even if they stumble, I love to see them get back up and try it all over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more. Um, what other talents did DJ have as a youth that you noticed? Well, one thing he had a temper, but that's come <laughs> come around uh, in a positive, somewhat positive. But uh, he used to like to just walk 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 
and he's got that now. I forget about it. But DJ, in less than an hour, can walk around the earth. I know if you've been around him, you know oh, yeah. how he paces. Yeah, we take long strides. Yes. Yeah. But he'll go from my bedroom back there. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. You know, so with the ability to make those great strides, I knew he was going to be someone. That's awesome. Well, we thank you for your time, Mama Ruby. And we thank you for answering these questions. Okay, thank you. And I'm uh, quite pleased that I could answer your questions. And I've enjoyed talking to you and meeting you as well. Yes, thank you very much. I've enjoyed your time. And thank you for letting me come in your home. Okay, anytime, Dalton. The door is always open. Yes. That means a lot to me, Mama. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Um, so, um... Through your travels, man, in these last couple of years, uh, you, you've done shows, you've done interviews, uh, you've met, you know, a lot of people that you've connected with, man. Uh, what would you say was probably the smartest power moves that you made in, <coughs> in what cities? Oh, shit. Um, one of my smartest power moves was in Florida. And what do I mean by smartest power move? Going to Florida with my own money. Going to Florida with my own equipment. Going to Florida with my own resources. Going to Florida with my own team. Going to Florida with my own engineer. Going to Florida with my own artist. The smartest thing I ever did was go with my own. That's the city of finesse. You don't see too many artists come up out of there, but you know they got all the opportunity. But I say it was the best. Why? Because it was easy for me to maneuver. At the end of the day in this business, you're going to need a camera, man. You're going to need somebody to market. You're going to need a stage, man. You're going to need a hype, man. You're going to need something. And whatever you needed, I offered. You know, so it was the smartest thing I did because I didn't have to sign no contracts. I didn't, I didn't need to follow behind nobody. I didn't need to do none of that. I made my own motion. I went down there. I presented my talent. I presented what, what I'm capable of, the people. I, I presented that I'm consistent. I presented that I'm not just talking. And I got the funds to back me up. And it opened up every door that I needed to open. So when it was time for me to leave, it ain't one soul down there that can say that they gave me a dollar, that they gave me a, 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 a blunt for free. <laughs> If they gave me a studio time for free, mm -hmm. they can't do nothing but sit back and soak it up. Because if anybody go against it, I got every piece of footage that I've ever recorded in my life. And that's just the way it go. You got archives, huh, brother? Yeah. Man, so we see that a lot is um, a lot of your career success has been... Another based. thing my fault, man. We don't smoke no more gassy matters, man. <laughs> Everybody in Kansas City, when y'all see that Gassy Matters baggy with that janky ass gas station shit on there, man, shake it up. Shake something. Shake something, bro. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, oh, man, my name, my security, my protection, my homies, my people, all oh, that, we ain't connected to that. So go and shake something if y'all want to. All right, what was you saying, bro? Uh, so, like I was saying, brother, uh, we noticed that a lot of your your uh, success and a lot of your movements and shit were made in Florida. Um, tell us more about the Florida rap scene and what you think about it. Shit. <clears throat> Florida rap scene different. You know, matter of fact, every coast is different, no matter what coast you go to. And I say to the Florida rap scene, just like every other rap scene I go to, is that it's bigger than your city. Um, it's easy to blow up on the internet but still be local. Meaning that everybody in Florida or Fort Myers or Tampa, you may be big as hell. But then you can go down the road four hours and a nigga don't give a fuck who you is, what you did, your story, your background. Nigga don't give a fuck about none of that. Um, shit, the underground, if I can get the underground some advice over there, stop dick riding. Not everybody. Stop dick riding. Like, same way I had to do in my city. My city was mad at me when I went against the, 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 the great tech nine. 
And I only went against them because I said, stop dick riding. I'm not about to sit here and wait for Tech 9. I'm not about to be sitting here waiting. If I was going to wait, here it go, nigga. Here it go, folk. Years later, everybody's still waiting. So, you know, that's really my thing uh, with the Florida. With the Florida thing is, is just, you know what I mean? You got you to gotta branch out. You got to understand that the whole point of the game is to connect all four corners to get your music that way, that way, that way, that way, get you a pass in the black market, get you a ghetto pass, and, and to be able to maneuver and shit. You know what I mean? If a nigga think he just gonna maneuver and shit around these ways and shit, motherfucker close walls in on him and shit. You know what I mean? Without p the proper permission. Man, that's crazy uh, that you're so... Uh, got so much detail of how you feel about, but you've been there, so I, you know, I get it. You know, you've seen it from first. I lived, I lived when I was in Florida. A lot of people don't know. I stayed in Miami, Florida. I stayed next to the CWB Draco dude, which is all the little young dudes. Who was on. Exactly. What were your thoughts when you found out that DJ was interested in music? Man. Ooh, the thoughts, man, we was young, so I don't know if it was really, really a thought. I, I already knew he was smart, you know, but he just amazed me. Just, just his, his talents and his capability and the, just his knowledge around the computer, man. And um, when he did the music, man, it, it gave me motivation to do music. So we used to rap and freestyle and, you know, I taught him a little bit of something, something. That, you know, just that love of music, I think they're running our blood too. You know, it's, it's, it's something about, you know, DNA, because we all can rap, you know? So, you know, all my brothers, we, we all know how to put something down. Uh, so, what about DJ stuck out the most when y'all were kids? Man, just that he was gonna get it no matter what. And that and that and that stuck out from when we was little to you know him getting his way with mama or whatever he was gonna get what what he wanted regardless. And you know that's you know go get her man his ambition. And, you know he got that he got that mind of a uh, mamba. <laughs> cool. I'm about kid. I'm about kid. <laughs> Make sure you ask him about our new project too, man. It's first ever complete. So many when they put like four of them down. Oh yeah, we heard you put a track down, man. Uh, yeah, man. So you know, I'm uh, it, it's that time, man. It's that time for me to, you know, be heard, man. I got a lot, of, lot to say. You know, just you know, been through a lot, and you know, just I'm excited, and you know, hopefully, hopefully we go up. You know? What's your, what's your, what's your ambitions? Like your aim <laughs> when it comes to the music, you stepping in it. What's your what's your vision? What's your 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 dream? Anything other than the money? Man, my dream is just just for me, for real. I, I wanna you know push this mental health. You know that's something I suffer with. You know a lot of black people you know suffer with it. You know and it's just an outlet, an outlet for those who didn't have a voice or didn't have nobody to stand on. You know so I wanna be that. I wanna be that big brother. You know because a lot of us. We didn't have Big Brother, we didn't have, you know, male figures to look at, you know, to look up to. It was always the street, so, you know, I want to take something positive, you know, and, and, and put a spin on it, you know, because I'm, I'm from where, you know, a lot of these people talk about they from, and, you know, like, we really live there, you know. So, I, I want to push that and push, you know, as, as men, we were never taught to express that, so that's how I'm expressing it, man. I'm going to open up that gateway. So what other talents did DJ possess that you noticed growing up? Man, just his talent, his IQ, forget the talent. You know, his IQ, you know, that's a talent alone. You know, just what he's able, you know, for, for his age, man, he was able to break a computer down, you know, like dope and, 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 and make something out of nothing with it. And, you know, that's just, you know, that, that genius level, man, I always, you know, cherish that, you know, and that's just something that, you know, you can't get rid of. You can get rid of, you know, anything else, but, you know, that, you know, that IQ. I got an IQ too, y'all, by the way. <laughs> high, hey, a high one too. <laughs> right. 
If you were to give DJ, if you were to give DJ some advice or some words of wisdom for his career, what would you tell him? Don't never turn away from you, man. Just keep rapping you. Come out hard and do what you gotta do. You know, that first day out, that's one of my favorite things, man. That's you, 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 you come out like that every time and shit, it's, it's, it's up. It's up. And I know you got something to say, man. Just being down that long, you gotta be coming like Tupac. You know? Stay motivated, man. Stay focused and shit. I came like this. I remember I was getting out the mud. Remember when I said I'm off drugs? I met the trap at the plug. Even the thug need a hug. You ain't trying to show a nigga love. I'm pushing crack off the curb. I can't let go, get this curse. Nigga wanna see me in the hearse. Then he wanna call, call it thirst. Four trade to the ninth from the first. We ain't had K, we had perk. Perk. Been rolling all week, I'm alert. Alert. Love on her nut, this skirt. If I fall, I'ma fall in your throat No handcuff a nigga, what you got in your purse I'm X, but it's hitting like a perp, perp, perp Don't you know about hot summer nights Sweating with no AC No AC Don't you know about the long cold winter shit Friend with no heat With no heat Don't you know about surviving in these streets Just for something to eat Y'all shit. Who? They on y'all shit. Who? He said they been here since yesterday. So they on y'all time. Oh, oh, they been here. Yeah, they been here since here. And this is Rollerby. Everybody ball this week. I got down on my knees. I'm not saying Jesus, please. This is my third day. I've been in traffic three days. Been going on fourth. Went on my fourth day at 12. I'm in Columbia, Missouri. Come on now. That's like 10 states to the neck. It's like 10 states to the neck. Easy. I don't know the name of this city, but we're in Kentucky. Northwest 6th Street, somewhere in Kentucky. Northwest 6th Street. Yeah, this the light that won't be right to my nigga free. He in the sights, he can't die, cause he know that he my enemy. Ay. Say that shit be hitting like a heckler And you ain't say that we ran off with your necklace No him, but our drugs were the exit Killer City face good out in Texas Tell them bitches bring them bottles out Sparking flames out them bitches tuck the heart around Stumbling in at 6 a.m. wake my daughter up Still I ain't tampered with her pussy Got a rolling up cushy, no Arthur that's a butcher and when them lights cut out, we on feet. Back street, them double park at the creek. Get the creek. Swear by Allah, rock, I keep to sleep. How you do a year and a day, he got caught with a blick. On level three, where they talk about rich. Where they vouch for him, knowing he snitch. DD, I be ignoring the bitch. Cause in the sea, you know it's plenty of fish. New duet, ain't gotta slay no dick. Shake you up and then breaking your shit. Rapper's victim in my city, shit sweet. All this dick rhyme, that shit come with a feet. Gate sauce, what you know about beef? It's been 10 plus. Rapping ass DJ. What's the deal, fam? Back in the building, back in the building. What you working on right now, brother? Oh shit, man. We motherfucking trapped the telly on shit. Set the stool up and shit. Um, over the motherfucking week, week, weekend. I don't know what today is and shit. So I got a lot of artists and shit. Um, I've been working on Glenn music. Uh, we've been working on telly music. Um, our own music. Um, Peasy. Peasy music. We got Lars, Lars in here. Um, yeah, so we've been just doing music and shit. So that's what I'm working on right now, just engineering some shit. Oh, yeah, just mixing it up. Yes, sir. That's what's up, man. We know you a jack of all trades. Inshallah. Yes, sir. Man, bro, so we. I wanted to get behind some of the lyrics and some of the, you know, bars and shit, you know what I'm saying? In, yeah. In the new album, because, you know, there's a lot of hidden shit, you know, that a lot of people don't know, like yes, us sir. in your close circle know, but you feel me, a lot of people on the house don't know. Hopefully, it, 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 as long as you don't get too policey, you know? Oh, yeah, bro, we ain't asking names or nothing like that. Maybe a 
maybe we ask them referring who you might be referring to, but you ain't got to tell us no government name. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so in your song Heckler, man, uh, you say, and we ran off with your you necklace. Ran off with your necklace. Who you talking about? No hell, huh? but I'll judge what an exit. Oh, ah, no, nah, it's, it's a particular good, person that she did. You know, he know for doing shows and shit, state to state and shit. Say that shit be hitting like a heck, like a heck. But you ain't say that we ran off with your neck, with your neck. No hell, but all drugs with an exit. X. Killer city face good out in Texas. Texas. Tell them bitches, bring them bottles out. And he usually be bumping heads with motherfucking shit at his show. He bump heads with his shit. Usually when he bump heads, they be scraping niggas and shit. You know what I mean? Um, beat niggas up and shit and all that. But long story short, they end up coming to Kansas City. You know, they did the same thing, the same little shit that they do everywhere else. But long story short, can't see niggas who aren't going for it and they blitz the stage. And they start fighting him and his bodyguard or whoever the fuck that was in his entourage. And then um, him or one of his people, they started getting the best of the Kansas City nigga. Like they started to get on top of him and pound his face in type shit. But you know, Kansas City being Kansas City. One one of the dudes homie came out the cut and snuck around bodyguard and shit and just hit him. Boom! And just hit him and he just literally on camera went to sleep. Went to sleep and shit. You know, they was fighting, they was brawling. Long story short, at the end of the day, motherfucker camera was me and motherfucker uh chain was left in Kansas City. You know what I mean? We when it's all said and done, you know, you look at his whole little image and shit. Everything about him is him running to this YouTube and running to the social media and flexing about what they did, but he ain't talk about how we ran off with his necklace and shit. So are you getting any support from any other Muslims? Mus I know there's a lot of big Muslims in the game, such as Kevin Gates, um, Little Dirk, as we've been speaking of, but how are you getting support from them? Not them specifically, but you know, other Muslims in the game? All right. You gotta understand, I've been Muslim 11, 11 years, and I actually learned the deen through the Quran, not watching YouTube or watching TV or nothing, not taking anything from my Muslim brothers because the Muslims is at the top of the game. You got people like Finesse Two Times, you got Mazi and them, you got so many people that's Muslims. But what I say, support, hell nah. Hell nah. For, for the love of the dunya, for the love of the money, that's where persuade. Because if we was in prison right now today and Dirk was to walk in and Kevin Gates was to walk in, Mozzie was to walk in, all the Muslims finesse two times where the money don't matter and they was to walk in, they wouldn't have nothing but the Muslims. Or they'd get extorted. They wouldn't have nothing but their Muslim brothers. Or if we was in there, if they got into something, they would call on their Muslim brothers because it's the obligation, it's the duty of the Muslim to uplift the Muslim. It's also the duty of the Muslim not to look past the Muslim chasing the, the glitter and the gold and the boom. But you know, like I'm saying, I'm out here doing my own thing. I'm independent and I'm grinding. I'm gonna keep grinding up to the, my way to the top. But now nah, a lot of these dudes just became Muslims and the ones who have been Muslims long time, they understand what I'm saying. They understand what I'm saying because it ain't no way that you the number one Muslims in the game, but y'all make money for the white people. Or y'all go put on the people that say, fuck God, I'm a devil, I'm the demon, but you a Muslim. You see what I'm saying? So, um, nah, it ain't no, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't no support. Inshallah though, inshallah, that it changed in the future. Because if you notice something, every single person that I brought along, 95% of them people were Muslims from Africa, from Texas, from Florida, from Kansas City, all these underground rappers that the mainstream rappers be trying to step on and boom, we all Muslims. Producers, Muslims, the, 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 all of us is Muslims. So what I do want to say, it's no reason why Muslims should be coming from me whatsoever, because they know better. Okay, man, in Green Visa, at the end of the track, we hear you say, man, I'm getting caught up in a fucking jam, man. What the fuck? Man, tell us what the hell happened there, man. Was that real? Was it scripted? What happened in that situation? Oh, no, see, it's a particular song. When I first heard the song and shit, I'm like, oh, shit, that's a nice song. Motherfucker getting off and shit. And motherfucker jumping this rap war shit. I was actually driving. I was in the process of moving this shit from state to state. I was handling a play and shit. And 
you know, it's a lot of back roads and a lot of dirt roads and shit. And motherfucker, where I be moving and grooving through and shit. And I guess I took a wrong exit because the whole time I was writing a song, you know, I'm driving and I'm texting it. Like I said in the song, I'm saying I'm driving while I'm writing a hit. But I was actually driving, so I wasn't able to look at my GPS and shit. So that's it. Towards the end of the song is when I stopped writing. It's when I looked up like, oh, shit, where the fuck am I? And I actually recorded it on my phone. Like, man, I'm fucking lost. I'm going to use this as an outro or intro. So, yeah, that was for sure real. Um, that whole entire song was wrote as I was coming across state lines. It took a couple hours. And I just texted and shit on dirt roads and shit. No shit. So you just rock bars while you was whipping that it, bro. That shit easy. That shit just, that shit easy. That shit, that shit ain't no soda on that shit. That shit just come. Hey, shit. that's that's multitasking for your ass right there. Inshallah. I don't know any rappers right now who writing bars while they driving. Most of y'all getting drove. So, Yo. I mean, y'all better catch up, man. Okay, so um, uh, in the Sindhu River, uh, you sounded like you touched on a lot of uh, like you were talking about a lot of people and touched on a lot of different subjects, female wise, male wise. Like, explain yeah. to us some of those situations in that song. Shit, I request so much. Sindhu River. Yeah, man. I mean, you just gotta listen to the words. I mean, like you just said, all my music, every single bar, the way that I write, every single bar tells a story. It don't take 16 bars upon, if I got 100 bars in a song, then it's gonna at least be 90 different stories because I don't perfect my flow to every single bar. It's a story to a certain group of people, a certain state, a certain gender, a certain so Pacific, that song I named it the Sindhu River because the Sindhu River is the river between like, separating like Asia and uh, India, um, the most biggest river in the world, you know, um, all the way to China, all the way to Pakistan. You know what I mean? So, really, it's like a river. It's like the Sindhu River worth of game, knowledge, you know what I mean? Sauce, boom, everything inside of there. And only the people of knowledge or the people who understand will be able to comprehend. So, yeah, that's the Sindhu River. Sight death. Sorry. Why don't you tell us how did you meet Rapping Ass DJ? Man, I met Rapping Ass DJ back, way, way back in like 2000. Seven or eight, can't remember which one it was. But uh, I had some old friends, you know, back in the day, D their name's DZ and Darian. And uh, man went over there, bro, and DJ was sitting right there, and we was all fucking around with this uh, game that I had on the PS2 where you can make beats. Yeah. And uh, so I was trying to show, show, her, show him and shit like that. I'm like, yeah, bro, we can make beats on here. And he was like, oh, bro, that's hard. So we all sat down, bro, and we were all fucking around with the beats and making beats and shit like that. So literally, literally started off with music. You know, you know how we coming, late nights, early mornings. We ain't from here. We come here outside all day, every day. Shout out, big bro, Sight Death. Shout out, shout out, little Dre. We coming through, bro, bro. He coming through for you. I took my time to put this through. And we say shout out the whole deep end, especially everybody in Gardner, Kansas, from Gardner to Bonner. And y'all already know OP. Y'all know OP, so it's like G-Town. You know what I mean? We down here fucking with y'all, you know what I mean? Straight up. You laughing, this is what's going on. All right, let's get it. Love. Uh, I'm feeling off, maybe I'm like a drug. No, this bro, we living like a lot. No, this bro, we living like a lot. This bro, we living like a lot. Who am I to judge when I'm off of drugs? Right. Mm -hmm. Major. You know what I mean? It's the big homie. Look at the camera. It's the big homie. Say what's up. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Look, Ted's got a lot of responsibilities. He coming home. He got another little brother. Holding the fork down. What's up with it? You chilling? Rooftop views. Dang. Aye. I told her I love you, man. Now she think I'm Asian. All I rock is white gold, so they think I'm racist. Check out my style, nothing about me basic. I think I'm going crazy, all I see is dead faces. 
I told her I love you, man. Now she think I'm Asian. All I rock is white gold, so they think I'm racist. Check out my style. Nothing about me basic. I think I'm going crazy. All I see is dead face. Dead presence. All I see is dead presence. Over the years, over the years, what's the biggest progress you've seen when it came to rapping as a DJ? Man, the biggest pro progress I've seen, uh, man, dude, social media game, bro, just went from literally three people, four people liking this shit to 200 people sharing the shit, not liking the shit, sharing the shit, you feel me? So to see his growth leaving KC with, with the faith that he had and then getting all the fans that he had, man, I would say, man, that that's his biggest progression ever, man. I mean, he took faith, he took it all the way and paid off. It just shows you how God works. Facts, facts, facts. That leads me to my next question. Yes, sir. You and Rapping Ass DJ been working close, close for years. Years. Give me two of the biggest pieces of knowledge that you've accumulated from working inside them. Two. Two of the biggest, biggest key factors I would say that bro has gave me. Two cheat codes that my bro has taught me is um, man persistence, keeping that persistency and maintaining and being grounded. That's a, that's one of the biggest things. Being grounded. If you ain't grounded as an artist, people don't understand this, man, because you know you got artists out there with with baby mamas and kids and all kinds of shit, bro. Slow down. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you slow down? Let me get in front of you. There you go. Baby mama. You got, you got artists out here with kids and baby mamas and they gotta drive their, you know, their kids to school and shit. And you know, they gotta go through constant shit. So they're not able to actually be grounded and focus on their craft, you feel me? So, DJ taught me that you need to be grounded as an artist in order to actually really really succeed out here and really actually do what you need to do as an artist when it comes to promo, networking, you know, pushing, uh, YouTube promo, all that. You feel me? That's, you one key, that's one key factor is consistency. Yeah, what's the deal? That's like 10 o'clock at night. Shout out Martin Luther King Jr. Birmingham, Alabama. Once again, solo dolo, we gonna keep pushing. I'm gonna push up on Atlanta, man. It's about like six hours late and shit, so. Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia and shit. On my way to Nashville. This mud packed to death. I don't been all around this motherfucker, but I... This bitch packed to death. From Raleigh, B. Headed to North Dakota. North Dakota. We all locked up aboard. We all stuck. Hold yeah, on, stuck. hold on, hold on. You guys, y'all already know what's going on. Stuck we locked up aboard. We on day three. Now, let me get my nigga Josh over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where you come from? Detroit. 
you cold. You cold. And look, and look, look at everybody. Yeah, jacket I got on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga. Somebody tell that nigga Jack, I said, walk, 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 walk. Spin, nigga. Bitch ass, nigga. That's how you spin, nigga. Uh, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, Atlanta, bitch. Tennessee, bitch. Next, St. Louis, bitch. Walk, 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 walk. Spin, spin. And I'm smoking my tree on these niggas' blunt. Mm hmm. Man, Illuminati, man. Federal agents, the police department. You gotta make sure the you judges, get, all them motherfuckers, man. You gotta make sure you making them prayers and getting some sleep too, nigga. Yeah, and that's what they try to they try to this this pressure on me, so I won't be doing it, bro. And I had to stop myself last night and pray. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So I was like, man, run off off on the road or some <laughs> shit, bro. I don't know that motherfucker ain't. He's gonna like shake the voicemail and shit, bro. They try to call that nigga, bro. We fly at the young shit, but bust a move. Yeah, hold on. Right here, we coming, man. She calls on the way, man. My nigga just dropped the album. Right in there, CJ. I want y'all to really tap in, man. You know what I'm saying? PlayStation. Nike. We endorse for everything. <laughs> I get endorsed by mom parking on the, the, uh, the power and light company. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like we're in power moves. I stayed in Little Haiti, another part of Florida. I stayed in Broward County, Florida, right up the street from Kodak people. I stayed in Fort Myers, Florida. I stayed around there in Cape Coral, Florida. Okay, okay, okay. Let's run that back, man. We, we've heard a lot about you <laughs> at Kodak, man. So you got to clue us in. <laughs> Yak, my what's, oldest son. What's going on with this Kodak Black and rapping that DJ thing, man? Kodak, 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 my oldest son, bro. All the way by, I'll be, I'll, I'll be his little ass, bro. That little grimly, ugly looking nigga. Y'all know Kodak be motherfucking playing too much out here. Nah, the thing with Kodak is this. When I start raising up the ranks in Florida, I start coming up fast. And I was known for shooting my videos and stuff in people's hoods and neighborhoods and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But also I come from the Midwest. The Midwest is different from the East Coast and the South. I just realized that you go into somebody block on the East Coast and South and just go in there, even whatever your reason is, they take that as a threat. But on the West Coast and the Midwest, if you go to somebody block, that's like knocking on their front door. Mm -hmm. That's like the highest form of respect if you're trying to get some respect. Mm -hmm. It ain't no highest form of respect than going straight to a nigga neighborhood and knocking on the door. That's what I did with Meek Mills. No offense. No, I wasn't going over there to try to start problems or nothing. I'm gonna protect myself. But what I was doing is coming with a Midwest approach. I'm knocking on your door. What's up? What an opportunity. How do I get on? I'm not just on YouTube trying to get comments. I'm not just begging people. I'm not bull, bro. I'm spending my money. I'm coming to nigga states, nigga. I'm making this shit happen, bro. So that was my thing with Kodak. When I went down there, Kodak know the truth of what happened. When I went down there, I went down there asking, where is Kodak? This is where he be at. Mm -hmm. um, how do I get, what's up? How do I get in contact with you? What's, what's up, bro? How do we do this? I don't know nothing about this industry cap-ass shit, bro. I don't know nothing about this until out of nowhere, this nigga come with this diss song. He come with a diss song out of nowhere, bro. And then he plays stupid. But then we went back and forth. We was doing that for hellas. And then after a while, he couldn't duck it no more. You know what I mean? So Has Kodak even been to Kansas City at all? Hell no. Nah, that nigga ain't never been to Kansas City. See, see, the thing with Yak is this. Every time Yak leave motherfucking Florida, he damn near motherfucking get into shit. You know what I mean? Rather it's getting shot or getting in brawls or getting what it is is because he, he motherfucking let the internet got him, he done bought so many millions of views and so many millions of subscribers that he don't psychologically trick himself into believing that he's just the biggest, hardest nigga in the world. And in reality, motherfuckers be feeling like yak ass, for real. You know what I mean? Just the people who listen to him. But like around these ways, Midwest, West Coast, that boy ass. 
big boy ass. So if so if you ever were to meet Kodak face to face, what words would you say to him? What would you have? To Kodak say? could probably be scared to meet me face to face. Kodak, Kodak would never want to meet me face to face. Um, and then plus I don't do the police and shit. So many like how the industry and shit they pull up. And they, for the camera and look real and shit, but be behind the camera be officer and police and put. I don't do that, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't got nothing against Trump, but I don't, I don't support Trump. So I will probably beat up Yak, bro. We just been honest all the way around the board. I will probably just beat. Hey, honestly, ass. hey, I just we just wanna know honestly, you feel me? Yeah, we ain't gonna ask too many more questions about Yak, bro. Cause I damn near beat Yak ass, bro. Most definitely, brother. We ain't gonna tell you on too much. Why you niggas we ain't showing? Why you tellin' niggas we go to war? I don't even know about them boys. Lie, lie, lie. Can't flip this perp, that nigga head got out. Can't have no body around. Can't have no body around. Cause niggas gon' fell out. When he was ballin', I had to go sit out. I wait on my turn before we hit fell out. Flip this perp, that nigga head got out. And I was standing my ground. I ain't had no body around. I'm fighting assault. I had a deadly weapon. I had a Smith and Wesson, but I got Let's get it. I got sand for all my cases. You know damn well he getting me off. Better do hair and nails. You better go pull up a scam and get me out. On this street shit. One, two, three, nigga, and that time yeah. and get cool. I'm like where they did your man expose this shit on cam. D me twerking the work, creeping and close your curt. D me twelve they work. Dollar see dirt go perch. Just see what they put on his shirt. 308 D bit burnt. Fuck it, I'm going first. How I do a nigga worse? Tell the nigga post his works. I ain't trying to hear the nigga verse. Nigga, if I die, I'ma die. Then puss gotta put in that work. Pop about to cut on that bourbon. I ain't never heard no Vernie. Niggas be pushing the verdict. Niggas on the club in the house. Try for to catch me a mouse. Better ask LT Louse. Caught mine just like clout. Set a nigga down on the couch. Nigga try to hold the drought. I'm all through a nigga house. Tell that I pop in the south. Couple of bitty little bar. Nigga ain't popping no bars. I can't call hard kick. See how high I get. Bitch, you see that DJ now that shot. That's my twin. They know we spin. Play the cross. We real you win. They like DJ bring that. All right, brother. So, we you know uh, it's been a really successful year for you. And, uh, you know, we're glad for a lot of your success, man. Uh, what do you think was one of your main keys other than consistency? Because we know that's already in your repertoire. You feel me? We know rapping as DJ is, is one take. Keep going, keep going. So what would you say was your sauce, you know, for, for this year, for your success? Shit, this year, my sauce was taking advantage of the resources. Um, actually understanding the game and take advantage of all the resources. Uh, quality over quantity. Instead of focusing on getting so much done, this album I dropped 15 tracks for a reason. Why not just bust it down to two packs? You see what I'm saying? So yeah, this year has been utilizing the resources, understanding streaming, understanding that it's a whole different sound now. It's no longer about uh, who got the most fans and who can sell the most tickets and shit. That era of music is over with. What it's about now is investing. You invest your bread, you guaranteed to make money back out. So the people that's eating in this rap game is the people that's investing bread. That's why the big companies that's why the big companies, when y'all be writing on this shit and being like, yo, man, I'm the hardest thing, I'm this and I'm that and I'm this. The reason why they don't fuck with you is because it ain't about what's coming out your mouth. We gonna see it when we motherfucking on the reviews, on the stats, on the numbers, on the blogs. We gonna know who's spending money. And that's what it come down to. So, you uh, you know there's a lot of other independent artists, you know, trying to come up right now, the same as you are. What's probably the biggest advice that you could give them to make sure that they can reach the type of success that you have, or even close to the success that you have? Oh, shit, I always tell people, man, stop waiting. In every single state you go to, people gonna wanna D-Rod or Buddy Hustle, whoever the biggest artist in that state. But I'm a prime example. I was the one that everybody, that all the odds was against. And I overcame all them biggest artists. Maybe not in word, when people talking shit, 
But when it comes to stats, when it comes to streaming, when it comes to distribution, when it comes to traveling, when it comes to moving units, thinking about the people that <coughs> I used to follow or I used to care what they think, man, that's like, <laughs> you don't even know. But anyways, uh, my advice is always be the one that's different. Be the one that ain't afraid to go for it. I, I, I deal with a lot of people in the past. And a lot of artists, and some of the biggest things is, when I end up leaving them artists' in states, they forget everything they learned. And they go back into putting their faith into the promoters. And putting their faith into the DJs. Putting their faith into their homies. When this is a whole new era, and you can't even bring your homie alone if he ain't registered. If your homie don't take all the necessary steps, you can't bring him. You know what I mean? A motherfucker would expect for you to wait your whole career just for them to go get a BMI. But yeah, so man, uh, be different. And, 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 and stand out and make sure that you go get it. Uh, so, uh, we also heard uh, that you have been uh, living on the outskirts on the coast. Man, how's that living from switching from the Midwest, middle of the map, to the ocean and, and dolphins shit. and shit? Like, what's... I mean, first off, I've been in 34 states. I'm in every state. They have the United States, the America has an offer, so I'm used to it all and all, just yelling used to it to me. But what I will say is, every single day I wake up, I think I lie and I be grateful because I just remember the goal. The whole goal is to make it out the hood. The whole entire goal from the beginning was to make it out the hood. And I made it out the hood 34 times, you know? And that's what I gotta tell the youth and shit like, we can get lost in chasing our dreams and forget to live in the moment. But Tupac showed us that living in the moment is the biggest parts of our dream. What I mean by that is Tupac most known parts about his life is the come up. When he was a dancer, when, he, when people can say all the bad stuff about Tupac. That's what he recorded. Mm -hmm. He was the first person to be smart enough to be like, man, I'm going to document all of this shit. So, what I, what, I, what, I, what I tell the youth is just most definitely don't forget to live in the moment while you're chasing your dreams because the moment is when they look back is your superstar, superstar dream. When they look back at this interview like this in 5, 10 years, 20 years, this is, that's when, this is the moment that you're a superstar. This is the moment when you really picked up that camera and became noticed with the camera. It's now, but we working so hard that we don't pay attention to it. Most definitely, most definitely. So, uh, I think I asked you this last time. Um, what vision do you, what different visions do you have now that you've reached a whole different level of success now. Now that you have all this attention on you, you got all these eyes, all these ears listening to you, what's the vision for Rapping as DJ and 2020 Vision Enterprises LLC? Uh, the vision is that I figured out, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to um, sync license. Sync license. I own them. They're 200 Southern songs streaming and I'm starting to really learn how these artists is eating. I'm learning how they get these checks and shit. So, right now I'm looking for sync license. I know people be saying, closed mouth don't get fed. I'm most definitely trying to eat in this industry. And anybody who understands how this industry go, putting a machine behind me is like putting a machine behind a machine. You see what I'm saying? Um, um, I'm focusing on streams. I'm focusing on streams and not focusing on just old people streaming. Now I'm focusing on that paint that come behind streaming. I got all my stuff in order. I got all my things in order. So really what people can just, you know, just just really just just um, tapping in with all that money that's out there. All the, the songwriters, 
the the, the royalties, the publishing, the sound recording, all them royalties, just focusing, making sure that I'm capitalizing and getting all my money and also uh, preparing properly when I release. Therefore, everything is just coming together. Then I'm independent. And that's one thing that I love to always say independent because people don't understand that a mainstream artist, all he got to do is just put the lyrics down. He got an engineer. I am my engineer. He got a producer. I am my producer. He got a, a person that mix and master his music. I mix and master my music. So he, would you tell you're kind of taking the Russ route, you know, with... with man, I don't know pushing. who route. I'm just 100%. I, I, I edit my videos, I distribute them, I distribute my music. My distributor, like I said, a punchline in one of my songs to like Lil Zay or Summer or somebody. I was like, if your distributor ain't cutting you a check, then shut the fuck up. What I mean by that, all of these rappers are always talking about, I'm CEO and I'm this and I'm this. But a lot of them dudes are signed to somebody, to sign to somebody, to sign to a group of people. Now, if your distributor ain't cutting that check, directly to you. I ain't talking about cutting it to the label or then cutting it to from the label to the secondary label and then the secondary label put it in a cash app and then now I'm talking about that distributor ain't talking to you directly shut the fuck up talking to me. You'll put on and you don't know how I feel to be an independent artist. But go ahead though. That's dope, that's dope, man. Uh, we noticed in uh, the Spoil Award that you rapped over a lot of uh, instrumentals, man. Tell us what gave you the inspiration to pick those certain type beats that you got on and what was the inspiration behind getting on those specific ones? Um, on the Sports Award Deluxe album that I just dropped, I most definitely used a lot of industry beats. So I remixed a lot of different people beats. Every single beat that I picked had a reason. For example, like Allah did it. I did the song Allah did it. Uh, as a remake of God did it, but the DJ Cali, the DJ, the uh, DJ Cali and Meek Mills, I think, or DJ Drama, one of them. But the Meek Mills version motivated me to do God's Did It beat and name it Allah Did It. Um, the devil was in there, devil in there. Um, it was the Kodak Black, I think it was Kodak Black, Close to the Grave, or something like that that particular song just because I noticed a lot of people in his state when it comes to his flow they literally terrified or they don't feel they good enough or boom like every single state the elite artists in that state everybody stay away from that particular instrumental so that's what made me do that I wanted to start I'm starting to learn how to do the melody the singing the harmonizing and shit so that's what motivated me to do the devil in there green visa green visa is actually uh, um a remake of Black Visa of some guy named Finesse Two Times and another guy Moneybag Yoski or Moneybag Yo whatever his name is those two dudes Black Visa I end up remaking that one um, as a Green Visa and then you got uh, Green Visa 100 I mean 50 for 50 um, it's, I was dropping 50 bars and also another Kansas City artist and shit that's coming up in the game he was dropping 50 and we just tag teamed it. Then you got the back end 100 bars. The back end is when I first heard um, Finesse two times. Um, back end song, I think that's what's the name of when I first heard it and shit. You know, every state, everywhere you go got a different um, angle, a different point of view, a different agenda, a different boom. So that's what motivated me to use that beat. And um, Tucker the Kankakee. Tucker the Kankakee, um, I got the name of that title from Tucker to the O because I kind of felt like King Mine was carrying the motherfucker, the nigga he was talking to, and you know, the his ops, and she was just carrying him on that beat. So I did Tucker the Kankakee um, because the nigga that I'm talking to is from Kankakee, and he's really sweet as fuck, so Tucker the Kankakee. But really, when I say Tucker the Kankakee, the her is not a her. The her is the dude that's from Kankakee. You see what I'm saying? So now you go back and listen to the whole song, and every time it's her, I'm talking about him. Um, um, I got oh North Philly flow. North Philly flow was inspired by the whole East Coast. You know, I ain't gonna say when I speak of the East Coast, I speak of Philadelphia first and then New Jersey. That's all I know about the East. Um, you know, you got New York over there. You got a lot of places, but those where I've been. So North Philly flow was inspired by Kensington Avenue in North Philly. 
Um, also inspired by DJ Drama, DJ Drama and Meek Mills, and um, P uh, uh, P and B Rock, like you know, showing love to them. Uh, Death Row Flow was a Kansas City artist that's like a rat and shit. Um, we be going back and forth sometimes, swapping spit and shit. He hopped on the Death Row Flow, uh, so I end up hopping on the Death Row Flow. Um, you got a lot more, bro, but that's where really all oh, Sapinala. You got tracks like Sapinala, me talking to whomever I'm talking to. Um, but the word Sapinala is seeking refuge with Allah, like asking for forgiveness. Cause you know, um, I don't really too much be trying to um, tell nobody to do nothing I wouldn't do. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Man, we seen that fake news was wildfire, man. What was the max that started that fire to spread so fast and so drastically for that track? Fake news, fake news, fake news. I don't even remember that track, homie. But if it's something called like fake news or something, boom, I probably pissed off somebody was cloud chasing or somebody was um, spreading fake news. You know how it go, like... Uh, with the internet and shit, when you got like females or dudes who ain't got no type of motion, no type of buzz, nothing going on whatsoever, they like to sit like on a uh, Facebook stories and shit, and then they like just talk about, uh, he's supposed to be the, our Kansas City rap, this, uh, uh, oh, boom, 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 boom. So, yeah, I don't really too much remember the song or the situation anyway, but if I named it fake news, 99% chance that somebody probably was cloud chasing or something, and I just hit some shots. Okay, okay. Uh, we noticed uh, in the Spoils of War also there's a lot of uh, Muslim titles, man. Explain, Inshallah. Explain to us some of those titles and, and what they mean. To okay. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's all praise be to Allah. All thanks be to Allah. And all Allah mean is God. So all thanks be to God. All praise be to God. Um, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. It's like when you knowing that you're wrong for something. Like, you know what I mean? You know you're about to do something wrong, or you know the devil on your back. You know, you know what I mean? Boom, subpoena Allah is more like, boom, subpoena Allah. Like, Allah, give me focus, man. Seek refuge, get me back on track. Um, All right, let's say if, if you could give him a word of advice right now, and he'll listen to every word, what would it be? Man, I'll just tell my bro, man, keep pushing, bro. Keep killing him, bro. Get more creative. Keep getting more creative with your uh, your flow patterns, bro, and your and your uh, your creativity to your mixing, bro. I love I love it, bro. Just keep the creativity, bro. That's all I can say. You doing everything else? You doing fine, my nigga. I love you, and we keep pushing on, bro. What can we What can we be looking forward to when it comes to sight death as an artist? Oh man, you know. You know, uh, I've been on the deep end for a minute. Uh, everybody's kind of been wondering, you know, what's been going on with me and shit. Uh, but I've been working on this project on the low, man. Really giving it my all, really giving you guys personal shit from my life, man. And it's called The Leak. The Leak. And, uh, man, it's, it's, it's about to be something huge. Man. Can you give us a sneak peek? Give us a sneak peek of one hook. Or, 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 or. Uh, 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 a bar that you quoting in the side of your uh, upcoming leak. Okay, uh, I'll give you guys uh, the hook for mental cages. Alright. I'm locked inside of these mental cages. There's no side of any escape. Escape, escape. Emotionally under lock and key, mentally there is no breaking free. Stuck inside of these mental cages, cages. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Psych. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, okay, so uh, you, you've been living on the coast for a minute now. Uh, You've been uh, underground now, and a couple of days ago, man, you f we finally dropped uh, the Spoils of War Deluxe. Yeah. Man, uh, how was that journey, man? What what made you decide you wanted to make a part two to the first Spoils of War? 
first off, I want to say it's a part three in, 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 in motion now. Oh, okay. I'm about four tracks into it, and there's a few of them that we've been working on here. So that way, as soon as them little boys try to piece together a few little bars, I can go and keep dropping on them. But uh, the deluxe album, I came with the deluxe album because... I noticed a couple legends, you know, they used to do deluxes and shit. Um, but also because I'm used to dropping 27 songs on an album, 22, 23, 24, 25, and still having a leftover seven and shit. Well, when I dropped the Spoils of War 1, I end up leaving out like 15 tracks and still haven't put them on this, this one too. Like some of the ones like exposing me by King Vine remix. You know what I mean? It's a lot of shit that I still never even put out. But that's how I came about the Spoils of War 2. Um, I had so much leftover music. But then I ended up knocking all that music down and rewriting the whole Spoils of War 2 and put all fresh content out. So. That's what's up. We, we really uh, enjoyed the first Spoils of War. Uh, it really was a lot of a lot of work from independent artists, you know, not, not a lot of people even drop more than 10, 8 songs anymore, you know, so it's good to see that that's coming back, you know, yes. in the industry. I've noticed a lot of people are starting to do that, so. Yes. Uh, so being in Florida, man, uh, what do you think about the whole Spot on Got Him situation with the, with him, with his paperwork? Shit, it's, just, it's just another thing, like. People don't understand why I don't like rats so much. Two reasons. I get my time from being snitched on by all the gangsters. All the rapper niggas. All the niggas with the locks and the tough ass. I'm from Eastside this and I'm from 24. All them niggas are told on me. All them niggas snitch. So, so, and then when you, and then inside that box, 95% of the conversation on a daily basis consists of, man, my bro told on me. Man, my day one, bro. Oh uh, man, my nigga, I went in there. So I don't play none of that type type shit. I don't play, nigga. Rap get exposed. The second reason is because the Midwest, West Coast sound wave, you automatically blackballed if you snitch. You could be harder than Lil Wayne, Kendrick Lamar, Dirk. Uh, 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 Drake, you could be harder than anybody in the world. And then Kansas City got some of the most hardest rappers ever. They just happen to be rats, and you automatically blackball. I hate how the, the industry rappers, a lot of them industry rappers, get pacified.